All right, so today is the start of my journey of building my own one wheel. I don't have all the parts yet. All I have is the controller box and lid. So I'm gonna start there. My plan is to take you guys on the journey with me, start to finish. If a simpleton like me can build his own one wheel, you certainly can too. We're gonna see how smoothly it goes. So I'm gonna to start today by assembling just the box Then I'm gonna be waiting for the brains. They should be here any day now. Hopefully I will film my entire process, building it, putting it together, programming it, and then hopefully riding it into the future. And we'll see how easy it really is. All right, let's get into it. All right, so all I'm doing today is taking These little heat up inserts, I'm going to use my soldering iron to heat these up and push them into these plastic inserts. That's all four. All right. That wasn't so bad. Holy shit. The parts finally came for my build. I am so pumped to start putting the controller together. All right, so I ran a bead of glue just along all those bad boys, help hold them in place. You don't need to do that, but this makes me feel more comfortable. It's all apart, it's right there, I can do it. All right, on to the next step. There's gonna be three videos that are on YouTube that I'm gonna watch that's gonna walk me through this entire process. So it's super easy. It simplifies everything. The first one is Veskman's video on how to assemble your flow glider box and all its components. So basically, I'm just gonna watch that along. It's gonna tell me what to plug into where and what to put in what hole. It should be fairly simple, but like I said, anything can happen. Uh, all right, let's see how easy it really is. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hmm. Put the things in the holes. Slap it together. Pretty straightforward. All right, one thing I will say so far is fuck this tiny wrench and those tiny fucking nuts. So I went out to my shop, got the right driver for it. I can literally just turn them on by hand now. So much easier. I'm just gonna continue following along with this video to see where everything plugs in. I got everything assembled. And it's looking pretty good. All right, the last thing I'm gonna do before I lock it all up was I glued the charger connector. That little black connector in there, I don't know if you can see it, but I hot glued it because it looked like it was just gonna slap around in there, so. Can't ever put too much glue in there. The controller box. It actually wasn't too bad. I followed along to the video. It was pretty straightforward. Um, it definitely took a lot longer than I thought, but it's all just finicky little little things easily. I mean, if I can do it, anybody can do it. All right, good morning. It's day two of the build. This morning I woke up early, took apart my XR, gathering the pieces I want to use in this build. I have pulled the battery. Uh, in here is already an aftermarket battery. I got a CBXR I'm going to use, but I need to open it up. I'm going to pull the BMS out, put it back together, and then I should be able to build the rest of the board. All right, it's all undone. Let's see what's inside. All right, pulled the BMS out. No longer needed. Because I'm using a stock battery replacement and a stock harness, I should be able to just plug these two in. The black matches the black, the red matches the red. 
I do have a multimeter to check these, but fuck it. I like to risk things. So I'm just gonna plug that into there and we're gonna go with that. Boom. All right, I got her all done up. The BMS is pulled. Um, I could plug it in and bench test it, but fuck it. I'm just gonna set up the entire board. Nothing but positive vibes on this build and that's gonna get me through everything. All right, so I'm gonna go assemble this board. Probably won't film any of that. Normal board assembly. Finally done with the build. I got it all put together. Yeah, I'm gonna connect to it for the first time and see if it works. I was gonna do all of the calibration on a computer. Unfortunately, the fiance had to go on a work trip and take our computer with us. So I'm gonna attempt to do it all from phone. So, yeah, if that doesn't work, I'll have to wait till she gets back. But if it does work, that just makes it even easier. If you can do it all from your phone, easy peasy. That's what I'm all about, so. Let's see if this thing will even connect. All right, open the vest tool. Click this bad boy on. Wow, it popped up immediately. All right, so it's giving me a warning that it has old but mostly compatible firmware. This is fine if your setup works properly. Blah, blah, blah. I've seen that in the videos and that's totally cool. That's because I have old firmware on here and there's the new 6.0, and that's what we're gonna be doing today. So that's gonna be my first step is upgrading the firmware. Yeah, there's three videos I'm gonna watch. One on how to upgrade your firmware. It's pretty straightforward. And then I'm gonna do a motor calibration, IMU, and then I'm gonna upload a profile. So I'm in, I am stoked. I am actually in though. And if, yeah, I got a V3.1 Little Fokker de vest default bin firmware. It's all loaded up. There's no other option. That seems easy. Gonna upload. All right. I think this is supposed to take like a minute, just over a minute. So I'll get back to you with the results. The upload is done. Oh shit. There's my firmware at the bottom 6.0. Little Fokker V3-1. Success. All right, it's going pretty well so far. I mean, there's some major shit to come where I could be pulling my hair out, but uh, that's not gonna happen. It's just gonna be smooth, right? Hmm. I'm gonna watch Surf Dado's motor configuration and his IMU configuration. So I'm trying to make this as easy as possible. I have the video up to go through the motor configuration in IMU, and then the app is right here. So XR battery, you would do it. So it tells you exactly what to do. You need to switch over, still connected, put it in, and away you go. There's a couple things that you have to customize yourself. One is your battery, because you could have any battery in it, right? So knowing how many cells and the, the capacity. And you might have a different motor, so. All right, I'm about to run the detection. Let's see what happens. Cross your fingers, go. Gypsy, no. <laughs> Gypsy, stay back. Come on, sit. All right, so I hit my first bump in the road. I knew there would be one, but during the motor detection, it's not detecting the hall sensors. Um, I mean, I have it plugged into the right one. I even tried the other one just in case I had them swapped. But yeah, I'm gonna have to crack it open and make sure it's plugged in all the way. And yeah, round two. Oh, little update. I hit my first major snag in the build. As you can see, I got two boards worth of parts. I was doing the motor configuration and it's not detecting the hall sensors. I've opened up the box, it is plugged in correctly. It's not the motor, I've tried multiple motors. So it must be the hall sensor wiring, um, which is no fault of my own. I think it's a hardware thing. I'm gonna have to get another hall sensor harness, wire harness and connector. And hopefully that's the issue. If it is, no biggie. We'll get that going and we'll move on. All right. All right, update. So 
I figured out my hall sensor problem. It was a red and black wire on the hall sensors got flipped. So it was a hardware issue. I part my other board, hooked up the other motor, was testing everything, even got the multimeter out. I've had it for years, I've never actually freaking used it. So it was good learning experience to learn my board, which is awesome. And I got to learn about the connectors. I ended up just flipping the wires, plugging it back in. One thing I would like to say is that it happened to be a hardware issue. And yeah, I don't blame anyone for that. Like shit happens. I mean, it was just a red and black wire got flipped. Future Motion prefers to flip the red and black wire. So shit happens. Um, yeah, no problemo there. I reached out to the community. They had all these different ideas. So I tried them all just for experiments and to see if I can come up with a solution. It was a great learning experience. In the end, the person that flipped the wires was the one who found out the problem. And he walked me through the entire thing of how to solve it and how to flip them back. And it was a great learning experience. All right, we're back. <laughs> at the motor <laughs> calibration take two processing processing boom hall sensors baby moving on to the next step easy peasy positive attitude that'll get you anything all right so i just went through the manual part of the motor configuration i went through like the general current the voltage temperature and the advanced settings I followed the video, I changed what needed to be changed, wrote that to the board. Should be good. I'm going to try the IMU wizard. Same thing, same video actually. Surf Dado, he walks us through the motor wizard, the motor configuration, and now IMU wizard. And I'm just going to walk through it. All right, so I've moved on to updating packages. I couldn't do it on my iPhone because there, uh, there's apparently a bug. So it said you have to do it on your computer, which I still don't have access to, but I do have my old Android and it did work. So I'm going to install the float package. Boop. I went and followed Nico's IMU, how you can manually do it. And he walks you through it because people are having a lot of issues with the IMU. So I went through that as well, and I'm going to test the board for the first time to see what happens. So why not do it in my, right here, where I can fuck a bunch of shit up, why not? Dude. A dude. That's exciting. It's exciting. Oh man. Seems to be working. Uh, obviously I haven't stepped on it yet. It's pitch black outside past my bedtime because I was super excited to continue on with this, but gonna have to try it. Oh my God, it's working. It's working. The experience was a wild ride. I followed the three videos like I said. I had one hardware issue which wasn't my pro which wasn't my fault. But I managed to solve it with the help from other people and fix it myself, which felt pretty awesome, and then got it fucking working. I mean I haven't stood my feet on it yet. Oh that's fucking kick ass. I am so excited right now, man. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Oh, man. <laughs> I didn't even turn it on. Oh, man. to try it it's way past my bedtime but it works I stood on it it sounds a little bit like a lightsaber so I might have to tweak some frequency things 
and uh, yeah, it'll go from there though. It's rideable. Just sounds like a sweet lightsaber. All right, time to wrap up this Vesk journey video. I just wanted to give an overview of everything I went through and I must say it was easy. Like now is the time to do it. There are updated videos. You only have to watch like three of them. It'll walk you through everything to build your own Vesk. Um, so yeah, I started with the controller box. I got my buddy to 3D print one. He bought a new 3D printer. And the box, he's still trying to tweak a few things to make it perfect, but I was like, I'll take one of your shitty ones. Doesn't matter, it's just gonna get trashed anyways. So I used that, I put the heat inserts in. That went well, and then I watched Vestman's video on how to assemble a flow glider box. I mean, you're just, stick the right things in the right holes, follow the video. Super easy, assembled it, and then, yeah, built the board. The next step was uh, motor configuration. <clears throat> I had one issue there, it wasn't detecting my hall sensors, but that wasn't my fault. It was a rare, one of a kind case I hadn't heard of before. There was a wire switched, happened to be the red and the black. Um, but I figured that out quick with the help from Custom Wheel. Uh, yeah, we figured it out. He taught me, he showed me how to how easy it was to flip the wires, flip them, and boom, I was on my way. Did the motor configuration. <clears throat> that went really well. And then, so I followed um, Surf Dado's videos. He has a new video for new riders, how to set up your motor and IMU. Uh, from there, I moved on to the IMU. And I, I followed Surf Dado's video, did it perfect first try, but I forgot to hit save. And it automatically updates some values. So when I went to do it again, it wasn't working. So I went over to Nico's video on a foolproof way to do your IMU. And that solved that. So you could just go to Nico's and do the foolproof way of doing the IMU. It's super simple and straightforward. I've done it a few times now. And boom, I had a rideable board. Tried it and away I went. It was awesome. Um, the app has a bunch of help texts. So now I'm just dialing everything in. I wrote it a couple times now, took it out to the trails. I am blown away. I already want to switch my other XR over to a Vesk and go Vesk full time. There's no way I'm riding anything else now. It's insane to have control over everything. <laughs> like, it's awesome. You got to do it. Now's the time. It's easy. Let's get it.